folks. Welcome to another Triple T Thursday. For those just joining us, that's Tools, Tips, and Talk, where we'll discuss info for the knife maker. Today, we're going to start a new series on building a takedown. Uh, so, a Bowie knife that you can take down, take apart, and put back together. Uh, this was a request from uh, someone in comments. I don't remember who, so if it was you, put it back down in the comments and I'll give you credit. But um, we're going to be doing the basket weave Damascus that I did previously, we're going to make be making that into a big Bowie knife that's a takedown. Let's go down to the table and I'll show you what we're going to do. So here's the design of the Bowie knife we're going to be making. Um, it's a pretty big knife uh, and here is the actual knife. Now uh, I'm not going to take you guys through all of the standard knife making pieces. You're going to see this in the final build video. I'm just going to go over things that are specific to doing a takedown. So this is already ground and um, profiled uh, and the bevels are ground and it's already been heat treated. It's ready for final sanding. What we're going to start with though is we're going to be doing the shoulders of the um, uh, the Ricasso today to get ready for the guard. So I'm going to show you how to do that uh, and then we're going to talk about the tang a little bit and get into the next steps. So first let's start with um, the shoulders here. So obviously we want this nice and level, nice and um, level here to get ready for the guard. If this is off your guard fitment is never going to be good. So we're actually going to do this in the mill. The way I do this is I actually use a file guide. Really, the only reason I use a file guide is to can get this thing open, is as a way to put this in the mill and to actually hold it. So we're going to be just putting the file guide in there and we'll lock it. Now remember, the file guide is going to be placed in the mill in the vise like this. So wherever our file guide is, the line that we're doing is completely parallel to this line. So if we wanted it at an angle, we would do it like this. I've already roughed it in, so we're pretty much going to keep with that um, outline. So I'm going to put it about that far away. Okay, and then I'll lock this down, and then I'm going to lock this in the center of the vise. And we'll get more about milling and things uh, when we get over to the mill. If you don't have a mill, so here I've got it set up in the vise. I've got the file guide here. These are proud by probably about a sixteenth. And I would just start by keeping this nice and flat against here and just filing this on both sides. Uh, this isn't going to work right now for me because this knife is already hardened. So these are very, very hard. Uh, the file is not going to touch it. But a carbide cutter on the mill is going to do the trick. So let's go over there. So I figured I better talk about some milling basics before we get over to the mill. So we're going to be using an eighth inch cutter uh, and really we want to do um, this area right here because although I'm showing this as a sharp corner it's kind of really rounded right now like this and we want to um, get this level and kind of get this corner here. So the first thing is mills are spinning clockwise this way. Okay. You really want to be taking material off uh, while the, the cutter is going in this direction. Okay, That's regular or conventional milling. If the, the, uh, the end mill is spinning this way but you're going this way, that's called climb milling. And you really only do that for very, very thin um, removal of material and um, at the very end kind of finish cutting. Uh, if you're doing any kind of depth of cut, like we will be doing here, even though it's eighth of an inch, we're only going to be taking off, you know, five thousandths here. Still, that's a lot for an eighth inch end mill. So, the reason we're going to start here, we're going to go down in this direction, and then come out here. And I like to have a flat spot on the tang, so that the guard sits in a nice flat spot here. So, we're going to take the end mill, go this way. We're going to zero our DRO so we know exactly where this is. We're going to go down this way, come out, then circle all the way around, and then start here, because again we're spinning this way, contact this surface, 
and then go into the same amount and then go this way. So that's what we're going to do on the end mill, uh, on the milling machine to get this nice and flat. So let's go do that. Here we are at the mill. I've zeroed my DRO and I've got it aligned so I can make a nice straight line. I am slightly worried that this is an older end mill and then it's going to snap and here it goes. It's always a good idea to have multiples of these on hand, especially the small ones, because they do break pretty easily. Here we are with a brand new end mill to do this side, and then I'm going to wheel it around and do the other side. Everything goes well, and it looks great. So here it is after milling the shoulder. It's got a nice flat area. I have a flat spot here and here for the guard to fit. So next up, I'm going to just do some uh, sanding down a 4 or 800 right here on the Rocasso uh, and here because I want to fit up the guard uh, and slot the guard. And you want to make sure you sand this part almost to fully sanded so that you don't end up uh, fitting your guard and then sanding this down and having a gap. So I've got the Ricasso and this part of the uh, Tang all sanded all the way down to 800 on both sides. I haven't done this yet, I'll do this later. So now it's time to do the guard. So I've got this piece of mild steel that I'm going to be using as the guard. Um, so let's talk about how we're going to get that slot in the guard. So what I always do is take some measurements of the, um, the Tang here. The width which is 0 0.690. I'm going to be doing this in inches, but uh, you guys can do the conversion. 0 0.690 of an inch this way, and 0 0.163 of an inch thick. So I always take that with the orientation here, and then this is a cross-section of this guy, okay, of what that slot's going to be. So the way we do this is the top of the guard we're going to undersize and we're going to make that part really thin and then the other part we're going to make it a little thicker. So we know our, our thickness of our tang is 163 so we're going to make the main slot 0 0.170 and then the other part we're going to undersize it because we're going to be hammering on the tang and that's going to you know, widen this a little bit as we hammer it on, but it will keep it nice and tight. Uh, I know that this is 0.366 thick, so we're going to keep, I always keep this about 20,000, so this is going to be about 0.346 deep. So, we're going to use the end mills for this. Uh, um, since it's 0.63, we'll be using an eighth inch end mill, which is 0.125. And the way I do this, because I want this to fit the guard, and remember, or fit the tang, the tang has these curved areas here. So if we made it exactly this width, these curved areas wouldn't sit here. So what I actually do is the end mill goes to here and to here. So the center of the end mill goes right to those areas. And then there'll just be a little bit, this little corner where this might touch, but uh, when it's hammered on, it'll push those down, so I'm not too worried about it. Uh, and if you have to, you can take a file and just square those off. Just be careful not to touch this area and widen it at all. I always suggest using a drill and drilling holes before you go in with an end mill. It just saves your end mills, and drilling is so much faster. Now I've switched to an end mill and I'm just going to connect those holes and then make it a little wider per my specs. There's the slot for the guard. If uh, you look closely you can kind of see that little um, edge down there, that little step. So now we're going to go to hammering it on. Let's go over to the vise. So I've got the knife um, in a piece of leather and locked really, really tightly in the vise. And I always do this right above the plunge line, so that gives it a little... It's not going to go down because the plunge line is stopping it. So then make sure you orient your guard well. Obviously you want the part 
that has the step towards the guard, so the, the wider part is going to be here. And I usually taper the tang just in ever so slightly so that it goes on a little bit. This one's not tapered as much as it should. And then what I've made is basically out of um, quarter inch steel, I just made this little thing that I can use to hammer it on. And then this little sacrificial guard so that I'm not hammering on top of this. So it's not even through here, so I'm just going to give it a little tap to get it started. There. Now I'm going to leave this here and just hammer this on. Yeah, every once in a while you want to just make sure that it's even. This thing, it needs to go this way, so I'm just going to give it a couple little taps here because I just want it centered as it goes down. Okay, so now it's touching the Ricasso now. Okay, so now you're gonna give a whole bunch of really hard hits because I want to imprint the knife on the bottom of that guard, or top of the guard. So now we're just going to loosen this, okay, I'm looking at it here, it looks, okay, it looks pretty good, it's nice and level, so now I want to take it off just to check that imprint. So what I do is take another piece of leather underneath this, so now I'm just going to give it a little tap. see one part of my tang is a little tighter. Alright, and now you can see the little imprints of that, of the Ricasso on here. Okay, so I think we got our guard. Uh, now I'm just going to go clean this up on a 120 grit uh, just to take all these little bumps out of it. But now we should have a guard that um, fits really nicely. So I created a template for the guard and kind of drew it out on top of my guard here. Now we're just going to grind to it. The reason I want to get close is because we're going to be putting pins in, uh, lineup pins, and I want to make sure that the pins are <laughs> not going to be off the side or there's going to be scallops in here, so I want to make sure they don't interfere anywhere. I just want to take a moment to mention our sponsor, Maritime Knife Supply. They have everything you need to get your knife making up to the next level. Go check them out. You can even shop in U.S. dollars. So I've shaped the guard, um, and I did go and drill pinholes, but then realized I want to use a spacer, which I don't actually have in the design here, but I want to put a spacer below this. So there's no way to line up realistically the, um, the holes here. I tried, um, and I couldn't make it work. So what I'm going to do is what I should have done in the first place is put this on the knife and then um, CA glue the spacer on it and I've, I've kind of flipped the spacer over so the holes are offset so now I'm just going to drill through these holes. What you really should do when you're going to have a spacer is CA glue these together and then just drill one hole through both so you know they line up perfectly. So we're kind of kind of do that, just follow through our holes, and we'll have two extra holes in here, which won't matter because those will be hidden. So I've drilled through this up to about, you know, to about there on the, on the guard. We just need to apply a little heat to bust those apart now. Okay, don't light your shop on fire. So there's the guard and the spacer with the lineup pins all nice and solid in there. Uh, that's going to be all for this week on uh, the uh, takedown Bowie. 
We're going to continue this next week where we'll do the handle um, and then start to shape these up a little more. I'm going to be doing some uh, fancy gold inlay on these guys um, and uh, I'll show you the carbon fiber and then we'll start to work on the other end, the pommel and the pommel nut, uh, maybe in the next episode. Alright guys, thanks for watching and we'll see you next week.